Hello, Caleb. Hey, Mike. How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing quite well. What are you drinking tonight? I have made myself a hanky panky tonight. It is uh-huh. a, uh, another non-fresh fruit cocktail. We've got some gin, got some sweet vermouth, and some fernet in here. So it's a very herbal elixir uh, and, tonight. And, How about uh, you? And a very like West Coasty with the fernet. Yes, it's the uh, it's mandatory when when you're within a certain distance of San Francisco, you have to you have to have fernet in your bar and you have to use it. Nice. I'm drinking uh, Whole Foods variation on the two buck chuck. Um, so I think it was three dollars, and it's a uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's uh, it's passable. It's drinkable. I see. House I see. wine. <laughs> Excellent. So this is a this is a, an unusual time for us. We've got a, a special edition, our first special edition of the Tesla Show. Do you want to fill us in on what's going on in the world of Tesla? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I, I wanted to do a quick episode. I texted you over on Slack because uh, today Tesla announced their Q1 2016 earnings, and it was unusual. Um, There's just a lot of news that came out of it, and a lot that after uh, listening in on the conference call. Uh, I just felt like there was just so much more news and inf- interesting sort of information in this than there usually is that uh, I just wanted to chat about it and um, we'll see where it goes. This is a little less prepared than our usual episodes. So <laughs> uh, apologies in advance if it's a bit rambling, but it's just sort of a, a quick conversation of, of what happened and what they announced and what it means. And so we'll get back to the normal schedule, but this is just sort of a uh, quick, quick injection on uh, what they what they just released. Awesome. Well, let's dive in. Well, what struck you as uh, as interesting about this call? Yeah, I think the I mean the biggest biggest thing is that they are aggressively changing their plans for how quickly they're going to produce more cars. Uh, they previously had said you know uh, five hundred thousand cars by twenty twenty. That was you know for years now their sort of goal, and today they dropped this bomb of. We're going to do that two years sooner. We're going to hit uh, 500,000 units a year in 2018, and the Gigafactory will be able to handle that, and a lot of those is going to be Model 3. And so that was just like the, the big thing. Like A ton of people were already doubting that they could do half a million by 2020, and now they just you know basically raised the bar on themselves to hit that number way faster. And like that, that's sort of the... the big, big thing. The financials, they did, they did okay. They did fine. Um, but Elon Musk was just like all, all about production today and like lots of cool little nuggets to, to dig into. So was there anything special about this 500,000 number or was that just a, a sort of stake in the ground that they had put out there? Yeah, it was just a stake in the ground. Um, they had, they had said that, I think it, you know, it corresponds with what they had said that the Fremont factory could produce a year. And it just sort of was a nice clean number that they had been using as a benchmark of where they would get to, because, you know, a lot of the Tesla investors have doubted that they really had the ambition to be a mass market producer and half a million cars a year. Isn't that big, like we've talked about in the past. But it's at least way different than where they're at now of like about 100,000, um, which is their current target. So, you know, this year they they think they'll still be at 80 to 90,000 cars. Um, a couple sort of details, like they definitely, um, Model X is shipping out faster. Um, they had already announced that Model X was shipping like 2,500 or so vehicles last quarter. But Elon Musk, like, he he said i've been i've been sleeping at the factory my desk is at the end of the production line and i am personally inspecting more and more model x's every day when i'm there like i don't know is any that a other good thing <laughs> well i don't know any other public ceo who's like sleeping at the office to make sure that the quality of their product is high except for like teeny tiny little startup so and is it, yeah that can be viewed as being a great thing or it can be viewed as things have gotten so horribly wrong that the ceo has to sleep at the end of the production line yeah i mean i guess it was like that was a, a problem it was the biggest problem the company was having that model x was not producing at the rate they had said and elon took it into his own hands to solve it you know i see that as a positive thing that he's like that maniacal to want to inspect every car i'm sure it's not fun for the people working on the, the line <laughs> um but like uh, not explaining it away just like i'm we got to solve this and we're gonna get it and you know they're now 
at a place where he was saying like, oh yeah, we're pretty good, comfortable now. Like he also said that they hit a milestone of like with the first, uh, the first model X, it was perfect to come off the line at 3 AM on a Friday, last Friday. Like, so he, a, that's a milestone that they had a car that came off with no issues. So that's cool. He was there at 3 AM on a Friday and like mentioning it to the public on an investor call. You know, you don't see Tim Cook talking about being in the factories in China, like watching the first iPhone SE come off the line. So <laughs> do you know, is there uh, is there factory line a 24 hour operation or is it like did it just happen to roll off at 3 a.m. because like, you know, it, it runs around the clock or was it uh, something that runs during the day and, and it it was running later than usual? I don't know. I, I mean, I I don't know. That's something I should check into because I, I would. um I would bet that they probably have three shifts if they're really cranking on it. Um, so that's something I don't know. I, I, we should dig into that. But uh, maybe they're just throwing raves in the in the empty part of their factory there to bring in extra revenue. Yeah, I mean, he it, it must have just been like this great. I mean, it's just so stressful of all these cars coming, all these Model Xs, with all these Falcon Wing doors, and all these problems and all these issues for months and months and months, and now finally like a car coming off that's like well-tuned and working well um must have just felt really good and then he also had said like oh and now there's more that are coming off that are perfect so you know <laughs> how do you feel if you're a model x owner who's already gotten your model x and you yeah you read the news that finally we've made one without problems yeah i mean i luckily they take care of people by the service centers and fixing them but uh yeah it's definitely not the most amazing feeling but uh i don't know i th i still just sort of respect the uh candor and honesty and just like in i mean it's fun being an observer having the insight of what's going on inside the factory and that like th that's something that is on his radar makes it so clear that he is in the details uh at a level that a financial ceo would never be. I'm not sure that the CEO of GM is really, you know, watching the tooling for the bolt or anything like that right now. <laughs> so was there anything that stuck out to you? I mean, you haven't sort of uh, looked at too many of their quarterly reports, but is there, is there anything that was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting? I, I just thought the, I mean, like you said, the numbers were interesting. The, the fact that uh, the three, what was it? 325,000, I think was the, the last tally for, or in yeah. the report, that was the tally for model three reservations and yeah that's it's interesting how that has sort of trickled through their planning yeah for sure and they, and a little interesting they didn't update that number since that's the number that they had tweeted uh you know a week or week and a half after so being a little coy by not sharing the most recent reservation number since it's got to be higher than that now uh, and they, they had hinted it was four hundred thousand, and so it's probably higher um but yeah like that tweet that he had sent out of uh, really going to need to rethink production plans was no bullshit. Like that was real. They were, they definitely decided to up the game and, uh, and change things around. And so it, it, I think the, the kind of, the, the really big point about this is that he then went into this long discussion of production ramp. And we had talked about that on a previous episode and he, he like, he said something like, I'm probably going to regret saying this to you all, but I need to tell you how this is going to happen. And because we have so many suppliers involved in Model 3, this date is going to leak that I'm about to mention. So he said, we target production of Model 3, volume production of July 1st. And then the very next breath said, but of course we're going to miss that. And I, I think that just <laughs> sort of really blew people's minds that... He's sharing an internal date that they've never shared before, sort of what their internal calendar was. And then he systematically walked through why that's important. And what he was saying was basically, we need to have a date that all of our suppliers uh, will target for getting production going, having enough parts to do volume production that our internal teams are using, and that we need to set a date and work backwards from it. Otherwise, we can't build a plan. But we will certainly miss it. And that doesn't negate the fact that we need this date is a really interesting and like intellectually complex thing. And especially communicating the Wall Street analysts who want to know quarter to quarter what are the numbers. I'm sure that just like really irked him that he had to do that and share that and just walk these people through who <laughs> really don't care why this is so important. But for us, it was really great getting to find out all these details about the production ramp. And so 
July 1st, you said. So that would be six months to the day before the end of the year. Yeah, so that's exactly. The, uh, they've, they've got a sort of a six month window to be or probably like five and a half month window to be <laughs> cranking out to start cranking out the cars. Yeah. And like we had said last time, the uh, uh, that Model 3 was and he also reiterated that Model 3 is built was designed and built for high production, that the Model S and the Model X and the Model the Roadster were not. They were designed for the intention of proving we could build a car at all with the Roadster, and then the Model S was we can build a sedan, but it wasn't built for manufacturing efficiency. And all these issues they've had with the X have really caused consternation amongst the investor community because if Tesla's saying we're going to do half a million cars by 2018, but you're just still having issues with the X, it was two years late. How do we understand that? And he was very clear and clearly perturbed because someone asked him that question point blank. And he said, you can't reason by analogy to look at what we've done with Model X for what we're going to do with Model 3 because they're totally different programs. Um, and that's going to be the big thing is whether or not people believe they fundamentally are different. I tend to believe they are, and he continued to reiterate how that's going to be different. And one of the things he said was like, the Model 3 is six to eight weeks away from being done, like release candidate level in the software world where engineering pencils down. And then they'll have uh, nine months to build the tooling to actually manufacture what that release candidate is have their parts suppliers start ramping up and getting everything together. And then they'll have three months of validation before that July 1st date to actually start testing beta versions of the car. And the intention is for July 1 that they start ramping production. And if they want to be able to hit real high volume production by the end of 2017, they have to set that deadline. Um, So it was just really interesting getting that insight into the the planning process, how long it really takes. And he really was slamming that like he he he's taking these suppliers to task on the conference call, basically publicly shaming them that they need to get in line because if they don't, Tesla's going to drop them like telling telling them publicly on a conference call is is a really bold way to get your suppliers to (laughs) believe your your uh, your targets. So when you say suppliers, is Tesla using a lot of the same suppliers that supply other car manufacturers? Yeah, so they they do use a lot of the same ones. They use a lot of tier one ones. They just, uh, you know, they actually use the same airbag inflating company that millions of other cars use as well. And they actually just had a recall announced today, like 30 or 40 million uh, airbag inflators. And Tesla's one of them, Ford's one of them. So they use a lot of the tier one manufacturers and suppliers for certain parts. But he also said that, because they operate at such a different pace of development of a two or three year schedule where most auto programs for traditional automakers are on a six year scale that they found over and over again, that working with these outside suppliers, the the impedance mismatch of their timing makes it really difficult for them to adjust and ship all the parts that Tesla needs and make the adjustments. So he was saying that they are actually, he's personally going and meeting with the CEOs of all the suppliers for the Model 3 program. He is then also having a meeting with the team inside that company that's responsible for the part that will be in the Model 3 to basically look that entire team in the eyes and tell them this is going to be the hardest project you've ever done. You're going to have to work faster than you've ever had to. And I want your commitment that you're going to do this for us at Tesla and change the world, basically. Like he said, it's <laughs> well, on the call. Yeah, it's interesting because he, yeah, he, they mentioned a couple of times in the in the shareholder letter about like changing the changing the world or changing to a more sustainable future or, or whatever the exact wording is. But when you actually think about dealing with their suppliers, they're actually probably a very small fish. They're not even with the number of Model Three reservations. It's not like General Motors level of of vehicles being produced. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this reminds me of a little bit of a past experience you and I both share of trying to get a photo book made (laughs) and you know we wanted to try and do something a little differently and it was crazy working with this supply like different suppliers to try and get what we wanted and you know the specifics don't really matter but it was just banging our heads over and over and over to get this particular thing designed the way we wanted to and they just were so slow and this was just manufacturing you know photo books cardboard you know i can't imagine what it would be like trying to get everything that they need for the Model 3. And so what he was saying was we actually, at Tesla, they're starting to 
build more and more capability in-house and becoming more vertically integrated so they can produce parts that any of their suppliers use. And that's sort of their safety net is if a supplier really takes, uh, you know, craps out on them and can't meet the demand or they're delayed, that Tesla will build that part themselves. So that's sort of their uh, carrot. I guess that's actually their stick. Um, and their Somehow ca- I'm, I'm picturing a, a frazzled Elon Musk like running around with a, a vehicle <laughs> full of 3D printers or something and throwing them into the factory. <laughs> yeah, and, and like I think this is one of the few things that is unique about Tesla and clearly is being... Uh, is coming from his experience at SpaceX, where SpaceX manufactures their own their own engines. So much of their own parts for SpaceX are manufactured in house, and that's one of the reasons they've been able to bring the cost down of rockets so much. Is they're building it themselves from, you know, the raw materials coming in uh, in the front door. And so Tesla, he said on the call that they think at Tesla that manufacturing technology is a bigger opportunity than the car technology advancements. And he'd never said that before that I had heard. And he really, I mean, he made the call even a pitch for anyone in the world who wants to do a high volume manufacturing of complex, large objects, objects, come work at Tesla. He he made it a recruiting pitch and (laughs) saying like, this is the best place in the world if you ever, if you want to do that. And it, he even hinted that there there's some new executive joining very soon that he's extremely excited about that they must just be still like crossing the i's and dotting the t's on their you know stock option grant probably um and today one of their executives left uh who was heading up their uh production for the past five years um so there's something going on with a new production person it's probably going to be a super heavy hitter in in the car world who's going to be leading their production to lead some gravitas to the fact that they're going to hit these targets do you think that he's crazy or or that like oh this this is more likely than not or like what's your reaction to this accelerate like accelerated pace of oh yeah like we're actually going to do this faster than we thought possible when they've had all these issues in the past well i guess he has no choice at this point right they've taken 300 plus thousand reservations for a vehicle and he they keep throwing around the end of 2017 number so uh at some point between now and then they have to get pretty good at manufacturing these things uh so i guess part of it is is it seems almost uh motivational i guess at a certain point they uh he's he's trying to get everyone on board he's doing the cheerleading role of his uh ceo ship yeah and and i guess the the other the other big thing is that um if they don't want these people to cancel their reservations, I don't think many people realize that they may have in the old plan, they might've been waiting two or three years before they get their car. And I think they clearly realize that uh, people won't wait around two or three years in the price bracket that they're talking about where a lot of these cars, you know, for me, um, it would be my, my only car. So I can't be that long without a vehicle. So upping the production definitely makes sense and just utilizing uh this this sort of momentum they have where they clearly have the advantage in terms of interest in this level of vehicle so just you know put the pedal to the metal and really push on it but it's it's, well, it's interesting to think like what happens between now and then too like what from tesla's perspective what what is like the best case scenario for what can happen between this huge like unexpected amount of orders and all the press around it and now it's going to be at a minimum like a year maybe like 15 months of no real news really it'll be just like oh okay it's further along in the process or things are taking longer maybe if it's if it's not going as well that like there's not i mean it's probably not going to con- obviously the reservation numbers won't keep up at the trajectory that they were at for the past month yeah. so they're gonna they're gonna level off and then the story is just gonna be over and over again like will they be able to do it will they be able to do that is this actually gonna happen and it's probably gonna be pretty challenging maybe he's just trying to set some expectations or try and start setting the narrative for the next year or so yeah and i, I guess the other big one is like setting expectations that there isn't going to be anything new um new car wise, like our focus of the company is on production. If you work in production, you are very important right now. And the entire focus of the company is, is this activity. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're going to have four quarters plus of no real big news. And there's still the outstanding part two reveal for the model three. So 
if, if, if they're done with engineering in six to eight weeks, uh, they've figured out what's going to be special um, that they didn't show us at that first reveal. So there'll be a question of when are they going to show that off? And maybe it's after those tooling is done, that nine months. And that will definitely be a spur in the in the reservations. So I think we probably have uh, a year until we get any more cron- concrete news on the on the Model Three uh, feature wise, and then they'll have six months uh, uh, until they're really starting to ramp it up and start doing deliveries. But they, they were they're they're hoping to do a hundred to two hundred thousand uh, in 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 the end of uh, twenty seventeen. Like. Wow. that they've never produced that many in a year and they want to do that in a few months. So there's going to be a lot changing, a lot of big parts moving around. Um, and I think they just realized that there's going to be a lot of information that leaks because they're going to have to be making a lot of big moves. And so they just wanted to get out ahead of it. Did you catch any hints as to what the part two of the reveal might be? <sighs> no, unfortunately they were very tight lipped and none of the analysts asked about it. Um, cause they don't care about product. <laughs> they just care about the finances. So there were a lot more questions about like, what's the makeup, what's the mix going to be? How confident are you really? Um, so uh, they didn't reveal anything yet. So we'll have to leave that for a future, future episode to speculate more on, on what's coming. Um, <laughs> the the only the only thing they said is they still want the Model Three at thirty five thousand dollars to be the best car you could ever buy at thirty five thousand dollars. So there's they haven't nuked uh, sorry nerfed the three uh, <laughs> due to the production ramp because that was a concern right that they would fe- they would cut features cut scope just yeah. to make that production volume. But they did say that everything that's going into the car is being run by, run by the production team and the manufacturing team. And one of the really funny little sort of uh, Musk style anecdotes was saying there's many different ways to solve a problem, right? And that at Tesla, they sometimes choose to kill a fly with a nuke or a machete or a machine gun when you could just as easily use a fly swatter. And I just thought it was a really... Uh, self-deprecating way to describe that sometimes they've decided to over-engineer problems and that now by having this focus on well how can we make it easier to manufacture how can we make sure our suppliers are are not being overwhelmed with these crazy design constraints that they really have a different point of view on what production means for model 3 separate from model x and that's where i tend to believe that this is true because elon musk tends to be a pretty uh straight shooter on what they're doing whether or not his estimates are always right is different but he doesn't seem to try and mislead people on their intentions so i I take him at his word that they really are trying to reduce the uh the difficulty of of making this car and i don't think that means it has to be bad i think it just is uh it is what it is like they, they really do want it to be easier to manufacture um oh and the other thing he said was that uh, someone was asking, well, if you want to get to a million cars or 2 million cars by 2020, which is sort of their new, he sort of snuck it in that, well, we'll we'll probably be a couple million by 2020 now. They're like, well, how could you produce all that in the Fremont factory? I said, you know, we'll probably end up doing more factories like you had mentioned in one of the past episodes in Europe or China, but that uh, we think we could actually get a million cars out of the Fremont factory and with just one gigafactory. He's like, I don't think it's advisable, but we're pretty confident we could do it which is like double the capacity that that plant was actually built for. So they definitely have some tricks up their sleeve for production that um, no other car company seems to be using. Otherwise they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't have that confidence. And so you mentioned when you mentioned like million cars or two million cars or whatever, uh, I I take it they're forecasting uh, some level of production post the initial reservations so they've got the what like 300 something thousand reservations yeah. and those are they're going to try and get those done as soon as possible but are they anticipating having a like producing those at a sustainable rate going forward or is it like a a sort of burst mode like kind of cram and get all these out and then like lower down to a more like ongoing level yeah. No, I mean, they, they, they think that they'll be at 500,000 ongoing from 2018 on. So 2017, they'll get a couple hundred thousand potentially, and then they'll be in 2018. And in 2018, they would end the year with half a million. So that would be, you know, 125,000 or so every three months per quarter. Um, and they said maybe 
uh, uh, you know, 20% of those would be S's and X's and the remainder would be Model 3's. They're not fully sure what the mix will be, but that's going to be their new steady state, that, that they believe they will have that level of demand, that it isn't just uh, a big spike like the Apple Pencil or something where like everyone wants it on day one, but like the steady state is much lower. It seems like they're actually quite confident that the steady state production volume for Model 3 primarily, and then when they add in Model Y, the crossover variation will uh, suck up that half a million capacity, and then they'll 50% that every year, and so then they'll be around a million cars a year steady state at uh, in 2020. So yeah, it's it's not just a catch up, and and that they he was saying if you order now. Uh, reserve now uh, you have a chance of getting it in 2018 but if you wait any longer you you probably don't order now operators are standing by yeah so anyways that was sort of just a quick recap and um, some initial thoughts I guess I I would just sort of say that um, don't I I find it uh, rough when people try and doubt Elon Musk I mean he is definitely one of the iconoclastic founders out there right now and I think putting a rocket on a a drone ship that people had never been able to do in the past and thought he was crazy and impossible. He's done that. He's built an electric car that people love and want and done that at a pretty good uh, margin. And now he's revealed the Model 3, which hundreds of thousands of people already want without even taking it for a test drive. I think you gotta, you know, I think the evidence is starting to tip in his favor. So I give him the benefit (laughs) of the doubt. I'd like to see him then tackle identity, maybe, so I don't have to sign in all over the place. Like, that's there's another moonshot for him. Yeah, it's, it's that sort of uh, it seems so simple, and yet it's still perennially a problem. Passwords. <laughs> Sorry to derail. There's no, 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 it's all good. Um, any other sort of uh, thoughts, or what are you what are you thinking about? What do you think that is the biggest risk, or or what will be a crack in the armor that you're looking for to see? that they're kind of full of, full of junk. I, I think it's just the, the reality of having to go through and do this now. Like the, the prototypes out there, the, the market is excited. Uh, there are lots of people have put their money down and now it's the hard work of actually, you know, buckling down and fixing the innumerable number of problems that are going to arise. And I, I mean, I can't even fathom the complexity of, of getting something like this uh, out the door and ready to scale. Um, and I, I hope they I hope they do it um, or I hope they you know, do it without too much incident. Um, yeah, I guess you're right. Like the, the fun part of it is done. Like the reveal is out there. <laughs> it's like the pre announcements, the fun part, the announcement on stage. And now the entire team has this grunt work of taking this concept that they have and scaling it out to hundreds of thousands of them, which is a, a very different problem than designing a desirable car. Yeah, um, it's like in the in the software world with, that we're familiar with. You know, everyone gets all excited when you're brainstorming a new product and the designs get done and it it looks really it looks great. It's exciting, and then there's the grunt work of having to actually go through and implement the entire thing. And you know, that's hard enough. I can't imagine trying to do that too. Can you imagine, of. can you imagine the bug list? Like we have a punch list of things of bugs on every project and it always seems longer than you'd ever expect. And so for a car, I just can't imagine, like I can't imagine <laughs> running down that bug list every single day of all the little issues. And then you have to go to hundreds of different suppliers to get them to get you fixes. Like it's not software, it's physical things that if they make a mistake in the way it's produced, I mean, yeah, it's so fascinating. I really want to go do the factory tour and get to see this in person because I've watched the videos, but it'd be so fascinating to get to talk to people on who, who do this for a living because, like you said, it is pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, if we get to see the production line, maybe we'll meet Elon while he's sleeping there. Yeah, we'll find out where he's camping out. <laughs> Excellent. Hot stowaway. Well, did you have any other, any other closing thoughts here as we, as we bring our special edition to a close? No, I th- I, that's it. I was just... Um, wanted to, to hop on and, uh, and share some of these reactions. And, um, uh, we have the, uh, the subreddit and we have the, uh, at the Tesla show on Reddit. Uh, we have Twitter at the Tesla show, and then we have comments on the blog as well. So at the website, the Tesla show.com. Um, so please leave us a comment if you have any reactions to the news or, uh, things you think are, are going to happen, things you thought, uh, are they're full of crap so we'd love to hear it and otherwise we'll be back to our normal schedule shortly excellent all right talk to you later mike see you later